Ray Dalio believes that 1937 is the most similar period to the one that we are in today. The economy is tanking. The markets are in a separate world from the rest of the economy, and certainly has no relative bearing towards meeting expenses or the overall welfare for Americans on the home front anyway. Corruption is at all-time highs, and the corrupt Fed and corrupt Treasury are on a mission to do whatever it takes to keep the markets up to satisfy the elite candidate Trump for his re-election. And are using all the resources and funds available from the US government. The timing and sequence of events show clearly the corruption. In 2018 the markets had the worst October, November, and worst December since the 2008 financial crisis. Powell and the Fed did nothing for the markets. But now, because of the re-election of Trump, they have repo injections 150 billion, Treasury's purchase of 60 billion, three interest cuts, and the list goes on and on. It is pathetic and all politically motivated. They are using all available resources and funds from the US government to fund the corrupt Trump campaign. It is very pathetic. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. In his most recent podcast, Peter Schiff said something that seems somewhat perplexing on the surface. He said that the current stock market rally isn't being driven by a strong economy. It's actually being driven by a weak economy. How can this be? Well, the underlying economic weakness is what keeps the Federal Reserve in play, and it's the Fed's loose monetary policy that's goosing this market. The Federal Reserve released the minutes from its October FOMC meeting. The Fed cut interest rates for the third time this year during that meeting, but the committee gave some indication that it would likely pause future hikes. The minutes indicated that the majority of the committee believed that monetary policy after the 25 basis point cut would be well calibrated to support moderate growth, a strong labor market, and inflation near its symmetric 2% objective, and that it would continue as long as incoming information about the economy did not result in a material reassessment of the economic outlook. But the committee gave no indication about what a material reassessment would actually entail. As Peter noted, while the central bank did hint at a pause in cutting after the October meeting, it effectively took future rate hikes off the table. During the post-meeting press conference, Powell said the Fed would need to see a really significant and persistent move up in inflation before considering rate hikes. That leaves just two options for the Fed in the near term. All that's going to happen now, the only two possibilities, is that rates stay the same or that they get cut. There really wasn't anything in the Fed minutes to change that view. Meanwhile, the Fed is continuing, not QE, and expanding its balance sheet. Everybody is in favor of doing that, but no one is actually in favor of calling it quantitative easing. Markets didn't respond much to the minutes because there really wasn't anything new. It was kind of a yawn. Nothing really happened. Stocks, bonds, precious metals, nor the dollar moved significantly after the minutes came out. Peter noted that even with the loose monetary policy, gold remains below $1,500. One of the exciting things about the gold market is that even though we've had this significant rise in stocks, we haven't seen a substantial drop in the price of gold. I mean, yes, it had already dropped, and it's back below $1,500, but it does not see significant weakness. It's just kind of treading water as the stock market is going up. Meanwhile, we do not see a lot of dollar strength with the rising stock markets, either. I would think that would be another troubling sign for the market, that it's not really as strong as people think because if it was so strong, foreigners would be buying into it. They would be buying dollars. If there was a strong economy that was driving this market, if it was a good economy, then a strong economy would be dollar positive. The dollar would be going up with a strong economy. But it's not. Because this rally has nothing to do with a strong economy. In fact, it's a weak economy that's more instrumental in driving the market higher because the weak economy keeps the Fed in play. It keeps quantitative easing in play. It holds interest rates going down. Peter said, ultimately, the dollar is going to implode. I'm not even sure what's keeping it up, other than ignorance. But at some point, the ignorant are going to have some type of epiphany, at least a significant minority of the ignorant, and you're going to start to see the dollar moving down. In this podcast, Peter also talked about the possibility of a phase 1 trade deal, saying perhaps Trump should consider a phase 1A trade deal. He also delved into the problem of government spending, citing a report that compared the expenditure during the first two and a half years of the Obama administration and first two and a half years of Trump. Spending is up 13% under Trump. 
from his side, according to the Wall Street Journal world's largest hedge fund Ray Dalio using options to wager that either S&P 500, Euro stocks 50, or both, fall by March of 2020. The Wall Street Journal wrote a quote, Bridgewater Associates LP has bet more than $1 billion that stock markets around the world will fall by March, said people familiar with the matter. The wager, assembled over a span of months and executed by a handful of Wall Street firms, including Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and Morgan Stanley, would pay off for the world's biggest hedge fund if either the S&P 500 or the Euro stocks 50, or both, declines, some of the people said, end of quote. Ray Dalio bets $1.5 billion that the stock market will crash. Following the largest stock market rally in the last 40 years, Ray Dalio is betting that the stock market will crash. A combination of actors have led to a market that only trends in one direction. Low corporate taxes and record low interest rates have translated into the most significant corporate buybacks in recorded history. Corporations are borrowing billions of dollars to fund share buybacks to increase their earnings per share numbers. Currently, corporations in the S&P 500 are the largest purchasers of stock in the open market by far. Companies are buying back more stock and pouring more money into the market than any other group of investors by far. The million-dollar question is whether or not this is sustainable. Some market participants would argue that this trend is unsustainable, and at one point, this non-stop corporate bid behind the markets will come to an end. At the moment, we have not seen any meaningful trade deal between the United States and China even though President Trump continues to argue and push the narrative that we are approaching one. We have the Federal Reserve, which is pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into the market, and we have corporations who are spending hundreds of billions of dollars per year buy back shares in the open market. With the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater Associates betting on a significant market crash, correction is the stock market ready for a pullback. Billions, probably trillions of dollars, are mouse clicked into the cyber economy in nanoseconds. Nobody knows when this charade blows up. Japan proves that it can go on for decades. That being said, all it takes is something to the herd, and the lights could go out this afternoon. The odds are that the long decline will continue, but there is a significant chance of systemic collapse. Nobody knows what those odds are. Food, fuel, bullion, bullets, and cash along with a backyard garden are not a bad idea, don't go all in on any prediction. At best, predictions are just a guess. From president to president, the fraud continues in the form of printing trillions of counterfeit dollars, but this fraud must come to an end and usually when the stock market hit the stratosphere signal the end is near, however, Trump believed he is the cause of the market going so high, and he will have to take also the credit for the crash even though he had nothing to do with it he was the patsy that happens to be at the printing press visiting when the raid occurred. Free markets create bubbles, waves of greedy optimism countered by a wave of pessimism and depression. The government seeks to harness these markets and normalize them into a more or less a flat line of control and predictability, not realizing that in the real world, stasis is death. Life is the energy generated by the waves of up and down, and stilling those waves is the death of our economy. The US market and its franchise markets around the world are so unstable that a slight decline could be catastrophic. Because of this, the markets are being propped up daily by massive monetary operations. Over $100 billion per night in short-term repos, this money is being rolled over, not new money, plus over $60 billion in monthly QE, this is newly printed money. Without this recent Fed market operation, the markets would have collapsed massively over the past 30 days. The dollar has crossed the Rubicon and is now in the hyperbolic stage, hockey stick graph. I'm curious to see how they pull another rabbit out of their hat on this one. Maybe raid a few more countries and steal their oil and gold. They've amazed me so far. It couldn't be more obvious. Yet we dance merrily along, just like the fools in Europe prior to August 1914. If you were reading about this in a history book, knowing how it ends, well, how does it end? Because what we're living through is the intro chapter to a book mostly devoted to what comes after 2020. And we all know that most people skip the preliminaries when reading books. It's not even that important. We're the appetizer before the appetizer before the first course. This is a cursed time. We are so miserable because we are, after all, animals, and we can sense danger, no matter how hard we try to smartphone reality away from our minds. It's coming, and it's going to take a lot of us with it.
The 2009 crisis should have been allowed to play out rather than prolonging it while the big shots guarded themselves. Technically the collapse will still happen, but only the peons will suffer while the rich are safely in their bunkers. All the nuances of fairness, equality, and freedom disappear when the rich are vulnerable. They bend the rules and place themselves above the law. Quantitative easing was, in essence, a 10-year timeout for the rich. Typically people have to play through the difficulty but not the oligarchs. Just how do you prepare for a stock crash? You can cash in, take your money out of the banking system and trade it in for anything other than fiat currency. Not seeing any that, and Jamie Dimon would be on Dancing with the Stars telling people how good the banking system is right now. And as long the club fed keeps pumping and dumping stocks, with some insider trading info on who they are pumping today, you could make a killing, but anybody else you'd be better off going to Vegas. The real problem is the government pension system. If the markets crash, those pensions go with them. Stock values have been kept artificially high to make it look on paper as if future pensions are all well covered. But if stocks would today suddenly be valued only for their fair value, like they eventually will, it would become clear for everybody to see, there are no pensions for the next retiring generation. For long, all have been used for public spending, deep state, government, and pampering of boomers, who are the biggest voting group. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share and subscribe. Thank you.